everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to recreate one of my favorite types of yarn mop. And this is a technique where I have some yarn pre-soaked with some acid already and then usually I create it as I'm speckling or dealing with dry powder on another type of colorway. I end up with dye on my gloves and I have a choice. I could wash the gloves to go into another color or I could take one of these yarn mops, randomly wipe my gloves to wipe that dye off the gloves onto the yarn mop before going back to the project I was working on. Now this is something I've tried to re-dye intentionally in the past and it worked pretty well. It's a bit harder for me mentally when I am specifically thinking about where the colors should go <laughs> versus uh, having it be the afterthought so then it ends up being more random when I'm not actively thinking about it but I am optimistic that I'm going to get something I love as much as these mops. Since we are dealing with dry acid dye powder today, I will be wearing a respirator mask and safety glasses. The respirator I like is a deluxe rubber respirator with P100 filters. It has a really, really nice tight fit, and so I know there's no chance that I will inhale any powders. And since we're using commercial dyes, all the tools and equipment that we're using is dedicated for dyeing yarn and is never used for the preparation of food. So let's go get started. Today we are gonna dye Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I've pre-soaked it in water with some vinegar overnight. Since this type of technique is fairly uneven by design, you don't need to do such a long pre-soak. Even just quickly wetting the yarn in your water plus vinegar uh, will be something that is helpful. But I have added reusable nylon zip ties onto these skeins, um, so that way it makes it easy to move the yarn around. Plus they function as an extra tie, which as we're randomly moving this yarn around in the pan, is important because you you don't want you want to be able to untangle it really easily in the end if you'd like to learn more about the yarn the other tools the zip ties i do have affiliate links down in the video description along with a lot of other helpful links like where you can find me on social media and where i might have merch and patreon and things like that so it's always worth checking out the description I have protected my work surface with a vinyl shower curtain. This makes it really easy to wipe down. And the colorway that we're going for today is our neon rainbow on a white base. So from Dharma Trading Company, we have their acid dyes in fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, purple pop, which are the fluorescent colors, and then frozen blue, which is a pretty good neon blue. Unfortunately, there isn't a fluorescent blue dye, and I think for that reason, that's why you see breaking in both purple pop and radioactive. I actually see some breaking with uh, fluorescent safety orange. It looks like you get the orange sometimes with a yellow halo, but this is a little more complicated because a lot of times uh, yellow when it gets really concentrated looks orange so I'm not sure if that's just breaking or if it's really just the concentration difference but anyway uh, let's get set up since I'm planning to dye four skeins of yarn and that means I'll be going back and forth into the dye multiple times I'm actually going to take a small amount of each of the dye powders into another container but first I want to set up the yarn because as we're doing this I may as well use the yarn as yarn mops in the process so that's why I'm going to set up the yarn before taking the dye out of the container. I have squeezed out a lot of the liquid from the pre-soak and then I'm just gently laying all the color here in the pan so I can try to randomly apply color. Now the colorways across all these will definitely not be even. My goal is to replicate a situation where I'm speckling with dry powder and then flip the yarn and then speckle again. So for each of these, I will be having color on my gloves to deposit onto each of these mops two times. With my protective gear on, I took a small amount of the dye powder in each colors out of the jars and then put it into some takeout containers. This way I will be able to sort of insert my gloves in, 
pinch, leave some color in the back in the containers, and then go and apply the color to our four quote yarn mops. Once I was done aliquoting all the yarn, I did wipe off all of the spoons on the yarn itself. My goal is to minimize the number of times I'm having to go in and out of the containers because I don't want to contaminate the colors or introduce moisture into the actual stock containers. And if we end up with leftover dye here, that's okay because I need these colors for another project. We only just got started and we already have some color here, I'm actually going to flip the yarn over so we can start with more of a blank slate. As we go through this, I will be drying my hands on a paper towel occasionally. Like if my fingers are getting too wet, I don't want too much color to sort of stick to them. The goal is it for it to be more of the dry powder. Uh, but I'm going to go through, I'll start with one round of pink on each, then I'll go through and do orange, yellow, green, blue, purple pop, and then cycle through a second time to replicate the process that I was, that I would normally do. So anyway, let's get to it. There is no question that there is a difference between uh, wiping dye powder onto your gloves with the intent to dye yarn and then speckling with a small pinch of dye, probably usually a smaller pinch of dye, so less color is on your gloves. And I found myself over the first round getting fairly decent coverage onto the yarn. I still wanted more color, but I don't think I'm gonna do a full, complete second round like I had intended. I think that when I pick up dye, I might wipe that color on more than one skein instead of just using that same amount on one whole skein. For all of the colors, I did dry my glove off in between going back into the powder with the exception of the frozen blue. That color doesn't stick to your gloves very well. And so the first one I tried didn't have a lot of payoff and I wanted a bit more color. So I let my gloves be wet, which maybe ended up with too much color in some places. But overall, uh, I think that this is going in a really nice direction. I'm not sure how close of a replica this is for uh, when I do this as a yarn mop, when my focus is elsewhere from picking up too much dye to paying too much attention over where I distribute the colors, but these are looking neon and happy and bright and fun. And so therefore I'm excited. And now I guess let's suit back up <laughs> and go in and do a, another round to finish these off. The fear as I go through this process is that I will add too much dye powder onto these skeins. And it's not an unreasonable fear <laughs> because certain of these colors like uh, <clears throat> purple pop can really be hard to get to set and clear and so I don't want the colors to bleed. I want some of this white left on the base. I'm not sure if I can cram this all into one steamer basket, but I'm gonna try. Let's see. The colors are beautiful though. Maybe. It might be a bit of a squeeze, but let's try. To say that this is a bit of a squeeze is an understatement. <laughs> um, oh shoot, let's double check that we actually have water in the pot. Okay, yeah, there's water in the pot. Um, hopefully this being too crowded won't cause any problems. Um, but I am now, since it hasn't started heating yet, let's wait 30 minutes and then come check in on our yarn. Our 30 minutes are up. I'm going to set this aside and our moment of truth kind of comes as I lift this. Oh, that's beautiful, okay. There's always a bit of concern that things might pull together and spread out too much in the pan. Um, I am really, really satisfied. I think I'm actually going to give these 10 more minutes just because it took some time to heat things. Just because it took some time for things to heat up 
originally, but then I will remove the yarn, place it in a pan to cool, so then we can wash it. Let's wash these intentional mops. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's fun. I love, love all these colors together. Maybe, I don't know if they're a tad brighter than what I was going for, so a tad more pigmented, but that's the difference between picking up a little bit of pinch of dye to speckle and then getting it on your fingers and then putting your fingers in, rubbing it in dye, sort of wiping off the rust and then going. And there's no question that when working on this with intent, I am spreading the colors around a bit more. Things are um, more intentionally randomized, but nevertheless, I think ooh, it is beautiful and I'm not seeing any color bleeding. Wahoo, let's check the ties. Yeah, I, it looks like our color is in the yarn. That's great. I'm gonna now add a little bit of some dish soap. It's always awesome when you don't see any bleeding. But I really, really love these fluorescent colors. All right, there is no bleeding. I'm gonna go ahead, rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry. Yada, 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 but oh, oh, these colors are just so bright and fun. These skeins are very pretty, bright, and fun. And I'm very pleased that all four absolutely feel related to one another. I'm not sure how much this is coming up on camera, but it does feel like they have a bit more color coverage than the original mop. I think that colors are a bit more distributed through the skein. It's slightly less random, but nevertheless is still similar. And I am really, really happy with how they turned out. While the skeins all have a very similar vibe, they are absolutely not identical. There are differences in the color placement and the amount of each color. So I say this all the time, if you wanted to use two in one project, if you didn't want it to then seem like you're using two skeins from different dye lots, uh, I would sort of blend them together by alternating skeins uh, to help mix those colors up a bit more. But they're not necessarily going to be super obviously different. But if one has a lot more blue than the other and you're doing that, you're using this in like a scarf or a sweater, you might notice a difference once you've started knitting or crocheting or weaving your fabric. There are a lot of speckle pops in here in addition to these smudges. They're really, it's funny, when I'm thinking about what I'm doing, it's much harder to disconnect what I'm creating. And I feel like the pigmentation here is a little bit higher than some of my neon yarn mops have been because I am intentionally coating my fingers with dye and applying it versus having it be the afterthought. Whenever I am speckling and making a yarn mop, my thought process isn't, I need to get color on my fingers. <laughs> the thought process is, I want to pick up just a little bit of powder to dye the yarn. And so maybe I need to have a yarn mop speckling project on hand when I'm doing something like this to really make it feel more like an afterthought, even if the speckles are the afterthought. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. This random method of applying dye is absolutely, is absolutely a favorite technique of mine now and I come to it again and again. And I want to improve my ability to create this randomness without feeling like I need to have balanced and even coverage. That's something that I'm gonna to need to actively work with myself on. Because there's, a again, a difference between when I'm like, I gotta get this dye off my hands, where is the white patch, versus, okay, where do I wanna add the orange? Where do I wanna add the green? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Which one of these neon colors is your favorite? Don't worry, I did not leave that dye behind that I had left over in the cups. Immediately after f 
filming this video, I started filming another video where I dissolved that powder into some random stock solutions for a project that will be coming up, well, probably by the end of the year. It's funny because I really didn't aliquot out what felt like that much powder, but like it seemed like I barely made a dent in what I pulled out using to create these skeins and they have so much pigmentation on them. So a little bit of these fluorescent colors really goes a really, really long way. If you love the yarn I dye, make sure you go and check out the Chemitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with hand dyed yarn featured in my videos and it's a really great way to support the content here on the channel and get some really cool hand dyed yarn at the same time. In all the listings, I always include the title of the video and the actual or approximate date that the video was or will be published because sometimes yarn is in the shop. It is also just worth checking listing descriptions because I always do share information about the dye type that I used, whether it's a commercial dye like here or food coloring. So if the dye type is something that you care about, uh, just read the, de the descriptions because I try to include that information there so that way as a consumer you guys have all the information you may need. But anyway, links to everything are down in the description. I always include lots of links down there. It's worth checking out. And thank you so much for watching.